Mayori? Mayori? No matter how many times I call her name, Mayori doesn't answer. Mayori is standing in front of a grave, gazing at the sky. The grave belongs to her grandmother, who died when Mayori was 11 years old. Her parents were always busy with work, so her grandmother was her only companion. I was close to Mayori's family, so her death was sad for me too. At the wake, I expected Mayori to break down and cry. She didn't. Instead, she spent the whole time gazing vacantly at her mother's memorial portrait. Six months went by. I had advanced to middle school, so Mayuri and I no longer commuted together. But whenever I passed the cemetery on the way home, Mayuri would always be standing there. Every day, rain or shine, she would stand for hours before the grave, staring wordlessly at the sky as if she could see her grandmother in heaven. In her hand, an old pocket watch. The watch had belonged to her grandmother. Mayuri hel always held it when visiting the grave. Mayuri? No matter how many times I called her name, Mayuri didn't answer. Back then, Mayuri wouldn't talk to anyone. Not me, and not even to her parents. When I saw her standing there, staring at the sky, I felt unease grip my heart. Her gaze was so earnest, her intention so pure that I feared some power might just grant her wish and carry her off to heaven to join her beloved grandma. And so to ensure that nothing like that happened, I made sure to stop by at the cemetery every day. I was standing next to the sky gazing Mayuri and call her name. Mayuri? No matter how many times I call her, Mayuri wouldn't reply. The only sound in the lonely cemetery was the echo of my voice calling her name. It was raining on that day too. Mary had a light blue umbrella. In contrast to the umbrella's colour, the sky was glazed grey, covered in clouds. After a while, the rain stopped. Rays of light shone through gaps in the clouds, a stunningly beautiful sight. Rem Rembrandt's rays, as they're, oh, they are called, or sometimes the angel's ladder. Suddenly a strong wind swept through the cemetery. It caught Mayoshi's umbrella and carried it into the sky. Mayoshi seemed not to notice. She kept staring at the sky. And then, slowly, so very slowly, she stretched her hand out to the sky, as if to grasp the rays of light, as if her grandmother were reaching down to pull her up. Then she lifted herself onto her toes. To me, as if it looked like she were floating up toward heaven. Impulsively, I grabbed Mayuri's outstretched hand and pulled her into my embrace. In retrospect, my fears were just a childish fantasy, but at the time, I truly believed Mayuri might vanish. I won't let you go. I won't let anyone take you away. I realized how embarrassing the words coming from my mouth were. Ma You're my hostage now. My guinea pig. It was the first excuse that came to mind. Before her grandmother died, Mayuri and I were fans of a popular TV series about co costumed heroes battling evil. I particularly admired the even, a mad scientist, and even got pretty good at mimicking his lines. Now I was doing it to hide my embarrassment. I could feel my face growing red, but I kept to the mad scientist act all the same. If nothing else, it was better than admitting my insecurities. Th 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 there is no escaping me! <laughs> As I said this, I realized that Mayuri was shaking. Oh... She whispered. It was the first time in six months that I had heard her speak. Her voice was choked with tears. she's your hostage. I 
guess I'm stuck here, huh? <laughs> she smiled happily. Tears fell from her eyes. And then Mayuri buried her face into my chest. Where am I? Who am I? I can't see. I can barely think. A terrible f screech fills my head, like feedback from a giant speaker. <coughs> He's way better at this shit than I am. It penetrates my brain like a hundred sharp needles stabbing me right behind the eyes. I thought brains weren't supposed to feel pain. Bear? Bear? <sighs> and there's more. I feel a shiver of pleasure beneath the pain. And a terrible itching like my body's on fire. Kabe? Kabe! I want to crack my skull open and tear my brain out. I want to scrape my soft grey matter with my fingers and eat it. Oh, oh. Kabe! The assault of my brain is driving me crazy. Who am I? Akabe, what's wrong with you? Ah! Suddenly, the shattered pieces of the world reform. I slowly come back to my senses. I'm in the lab, standing in front of the phone wave, names of the change with my cell phone to my ear. No. Not the phone wave names that did to change. Since its headgear since headgear is attached to it, it's the time leap machine. It's hard to breathe. Give me oxygen. I hear a low, wheezing groan and realize it's coming from my own throat. <coughs> I close my mouth and then take a deep breath. <coughs> oh god. You know what? I started choking, and then it, like, turned into actual choking, so that's not good. The insides of my throat feel like they're burning. I resurge, resist the urge to cough and continue filling my lungs with air. I notice that I'm drenched in sweat. The drops sliding down my forehead are annoying. I try to wipe them away with the back of my right hand. My hand obeys. Slowly. Something is off. It's like my body and mind aren't totally in sync with each other. Almost as if this isn't really my body. As if my nerves aren't communicating properly with my extremities. I try blinking slowly. This might just be my imagination. Could this be exhaustion? I haven't slept much lately. I try to move my hand again. There's no disconnect this time. This is my body. Okabe, are you listening? familiar voice. I turn around slowly. Kurisu is there. She stares at me, perplexed. What was all that screaming for? What's she talking about? Are you sick? Ugh. I try answering, but my voice doesn't work too well. Even more bewildered, I clear my throat several times. No! I'm fine. Get ready to go already. We're going shopping, remember? Shopping? For what? I search my memories. The moment I do, images appear in my mind like a string of exploding light bulbs. Humans are temporal beings. Please don't show me this again. Are you sure about this? Really? I remember now. I used the time leap machine. You'll remember the future. That's right. 
What am I standing around for? Where am I? Huh? Huh? I grab Koshu's shoulders and pull her close. <gasps> what time is it right now? What month? What day? Hey, that hurts. Calm down. How can I be calm? Shopping? You said we were going shopping. Which shopping trip is she talking about? Daru sitting at his computer, staring at his wide-eyed. Daru! What day is it? What time is it? Uh, uh, it's, it's the 13th. A little past five. The 13th. A little past five. Did it work? Did I manage to leap in the middle of all that chaos? Did my memories really jump through time? Does that mean I've leapt into my past self? Is there a chance this was all a dream? Thinking back, forward, it doesn't seem real. Commando's breaking into the lab like something out of a Hollywood movie. But the sight of my Uri, broken and bloody, is burned into my eyes. I remember the smell of blood. The sound of the gunshot. The weight of the headgear on my head. The pain of the bullet tearing through my arm. Kurosu screaming. Sasua fighting to defend us. I remember it all vividly. I touched my arm. No bullet holes. No pain, even. Was it all a dream? I don't know. I've never time-leaped before. I can only hope that it was a dream. A future like that is too much to bear. I recall Mayuri's last moments and my eyes filled with tears. I forced the tide of emotion back. Where's Mayuri? I look around the lab. Kosu and Daru are here. But I can't find Mayuri. Where's Mayuri? Uh, she just left saying we should go into Lukashi's place. Weren't you listening? That's right. Mayuri went to beg Lukako to wear her costume. She won't return until it's time for the party. What do I do? What do I believe? Was it a dream? Or was it real? If it was a dream, then I don't have to worry about anything. If it was real, then I need to act. Now! I... <sighs> I take a deep breath. It must have been a dream. There's no way something like that could actually happen. It was a nightmare brought on by our anxiety. That's all. There's no other logical explanation. I desperately persuade myself that, it, that it's so. Little did I know that I would soon regret my foolishness. Kurosu goes shopping alone. I stay in the lab for, with Daru and wait for Mayuri to return. An innocent smile. Mayuri is alive. Nothing will happen to her. I was worried for nothing. When Suzu arrives, we begin the meeting. I've heard these words before. Deja vu. A trick of the mind. Oh. Do they have plans? Ferris Chan is a running at tournament. Crap, I should have gone to cheer. How careless of me! And look at Chan seems embarrassed for some reason. It's just like my dream. I've never remembered a dream this vividly before. I remember every word that was spoken. You still haven't convinced her to cosplay? She said it was embarrassing. I kept telling her cuteness is justice, but she never learns. Cuteness is justice. Is that what they say? You're too cute, too, Christian. Uh, uh, uh. Hey, Kami Ball's coming up. You wanna go? I can't make something new, but I have a costume of post-awakening Sarah from Blood Tune last, made last year. I think the size is just about right for you. 
Me? Cosplay? I'm sort of interested. But, but I refuse to do it in public, You don't have to show anyone, but eventually you'll come... You'll want them to see. The cosplay demon compels you. That reminds me. Christian, you're always wearing that cute uniform. What school did you go to? What school is it from? Oh, this? I attended I am I am in for about two weeks. I'm on the socket after the uniform. Oh! The uniform is really cute, but you made it even cuter! You might have a really good design sense! I'll wear the costume tomorrow, okay? Will you try it on then? Sure. When's the photo shoot? I know you're still a pervert, Hashida. Come on, it's Bloodtoon Seira! She's got Panmoro going on! Panmoro? Panmoro? It means her panties are completely exposed! No way! It's okay! You might not know this, but last year there was a really popular saying! They're not panties, so it's not embarrassing! Japan is over. Wear it, okay? It's a promise! Maybe you shouldn't bother. Am I really gonna, like, replay this whole scene? Suzua speaks, her tone sharp. She's scowling at Kurisu again. Suddenly, the atmosphere in the room changes. I remember this, too. I feel like I'm losing my mind here. You're asking for trouble, trusting Makase Kurisu. What's that supposed to mean? I've been meaning to ask. Wrong voice. I've been meaning to ask. Did I do something to you? Not to me, but I know everything you have done. What do you mean? I did nothing to be guilty of. Perhaps, but I know your true nature. Wow, so you can see in my heart? That's quite a lack of technology. I'd love to hear how it works. It's not science. It's a prediction. So you're just making it up. I know. Oh, Karin. Mayuri clings to me with teary eyes. Stop the providing. Should I listen to Mayuri's plea? Like I did in the dream? Knowing that I can't stop the fight, should I just let Mayuri handle it instead? I don't know. I can't move a muscle! Please! Mayuri pouts then goes over to the two girls. Uh, guys! Mayushi doesn't like it when you fight. I'm talking along, okay? Dora comes over to chat with Suzua, and gradually peace returns to the lab. Kurisu is in the development room, making a call, probably to her mother in America. I sit on the sofa and watch TV while sipping Dr. P. But I can't pay attention to what I see on the screen. It doesn't enter my head. Mayuri sits down next to me. She peels a banana and begins eating it. Hey, oh, come in! It's been really lively these past few weeks, huh? <laughs> Stop it. Why are you saying the same things as in that terrible dream? It was a dream. It has to be a dream! It's fun! Mayuri smiles happily, not noticing my lack of a reply. Um, neither do any blood mems. Mayushi thinks he's getting a little cramped in here. First, you don't have enough chairs. We should buy more. Do you have the money, Okarin? I shake my head wordlessly. For some reason, I'm afraid to look Mayuri in the face. I guess you can use some of my salary. We need a new microwave, too. Otherwise, I can't warm up any juicy chicken, number one. Okarin? Are you okay? You don't look so good. It's nothing. Are you feeling 
sick? Do you need to rest? You wanna lie down? You can lie on my lap, okay? I'm not! Before I can finish, the television interrupts me with an urgent news bulletin. The subtitles read, Terrorist Bomb Threat Suspends Yamano Yamanote Sobu Keihintoku Lines. Bomb Threat? Hang on. Those lines all pass through Akiba. How is Mayushi gonna get home? Oh yeah! I should call home! It can't be! It's the same. Every last thing the same. Akabe Rintaro, I need to know. It was a dream. You completed the time lapse machine, right? It had to be a dream. If it was a dream, then why? Are you listening? Uh, the time leap machine's done. Okay. I just remembered I got something to do. I'm going out. Suzuo leaves the lab without another word. What's wrong with her? Does she know what's about to happen? Nothing's going to happen. The break-in was a dream! But no matter how hard I try and convince myself of that, I can't shake the icy hand clutching my heart. I can't breathe. Even though it's hot and humid, my body shivers. I remember this feeling too, from the dream. Did I choose wrong? Was I granted the second chance only to let it go to waste? A soft feeling against my fingers. I look down to see Mayuri's hand holding mine. And I look up, I see worry written on her face. I reflectively look toward the door. If the dream wasn't a dream, then... Any second now... It happens exactly as I remember. Five men burst into the lab. Their movements are swift and sure. Professional, and each of them is carrying a gun. They spread out just inside the door and aim the weapons at us. I recognize each of them. There's no denying it now. I did leap through time. It was the future I remembered. I was supposed to change this present to stop the madness about to unfold. But I told myself it was a dream and wasted my chance to save everyone. Enter the air! Nobody move! Silence. Time seems to grind to a halt. The men say nothing. Why didn't I do anything to change this? Wasn't that why I leapt through time? The sound of heels, heels echo down the hallway. A woman is coming up the stairs. Kiryu Maweka. The woman who killed, who will kill Mayori. <laughs> the dream was real. Those were memories of the future. This is happening because I did nothing to stop it. We're taking the time machine. If I kill her first, will Mayuri live? I consider the option, but soon give up. The real danger is the men behind her. The three of them have assault rifles. They'll gun us down the instant I try anything. My only hope is for Suzuki to make her move before Mayuri is shot. Is there even a chance? Makase Kurisu. Hokabe Rintaro. Hishida Itaru, the three of you will come with us. You can't resist. Come with us. <gasps> Where? I have no words. At, at, at least tell us where we're going. You cannot refuse. There is nowhere to run. We have men stationed throughout Akihabara. I don't want to hurt anyone. The three of you will come with us. Why just the three of us? I'm not answering your questions. Come with us. It's your only choice. Moeka-san! You're in Lab Mem too, aren't you? In reply, Moeka pulls a gun from her belt and points it at us. It's happening again. Our mission 
It's a silence you. Your refusal is to, to come will change nothing. Come with us. Now. If you continue to resist, I'll have to resort to extreme measures. Oweka slowly raises her gun. She points the muzzle at... Shina Mayuri is not needed. I try to shout stop, but my voice catches in my throat. Nothing comes out but a pitiful wheeze. I turn to Kurisu for help. Kurisu is staring at Mayuri. She looks as if she might start crying at any moment. I turn to Daru. He's shaking. His lips move as if to speak, but nothing comes out. Someone. Anyone. Please. Stop her. Stop Moeka! Placern. For FB. Placern. For FB. FB? I didn't question this the first time. I was too caught up in the moment, but... Her lips close tightly. A sharp, dry crack splits the air. Time slows to a crawl. Oweka pulled the trigger. Blood spurts from Mayuri's forehead. It splashes across my face, wet and warm. Her delicate, frail body falls toward me. I catch her. Her body is limp, like a puppet with no strings. Her head and arms dangle lifelessly. The smell of gunpowder fills my nose. And then the smell of blood. Daru clutches his head and falls to his knees, screaming at the top of his lungs. In my arms, Murray takes one long, ragged breath. And then... <laughs> you know, it's no easier the second time around. She's dead. Mayuri's dead. Again. I'm sorry, but... Could you have done the again thing without it sounding slightly comical? I'm s I'm sorry. It's like, well, Mayuri's dead. Again. <laughs> I know that's not the tone, but I just... I can't help it. I'm sorry. Her face is covered in blood. Her blood stains my hands. It's warm. You three come with us. Now. No more warnings. Resist and we will kill you too. I hear a voice. But I can't comprehend what it's saying. It's the same. I knew it would be. I let Mayuri die again. Because I didn't believe my own memories of the future. Future. I lay Mayuri down on the floor. I'm sorry, Mayuri. I'm so sorry. I stand up. Rage takes hold of me once again, and helpless to resist. I take one menacing step toward Moeka. Okabe! Okabe! Kurosu grabs my hand before I can take another. You can't! Let me go! You can't! I'll kill you! Moeka's gun is aimed at my head. Her finger is already on the trigger. You're gonna kill me too! If you resist. Please, Okabe. Do what she says, okay? Otherwise, I'll kill you too. I grip my teeth and suppress my anger. Just then, something small and round strikes Moeka's gun hand. Come, she drops her gun. At her feet lies a small stone. Commando, Su Commando Suzur is on the scene, don't worry. Get down! <laughs> uh. The next events transpire exactly as I remember. Suzur appears in the doorway, knocking down the first man before anyone can react. He then proceeds to dispatch the remaining men with a series of swift, precise maneuvers. <laughs> Who the hell? The dark-skinned man, the last one standing, takes aim at Suzuo with his assault rifle. 
But before he can fire, Suzuru snatches a stunned right attacker's gun and shoots him. Ugh! Blood spurts from the man's hand. Without stopping, Suzuru delivers a soaring roundhouse kick to the man's jaw. No. <laughs> Maweka and Suzuru point their guns at each other. A standoff. Neither moves. Silence returns to the room. Who are you? 42! She glances at me. TV! This time I already know what she means. Turned on! I make a break for the development room. Don't move! That's my line! Cursor is right behind me. I grab the headgear and jam it on without a moment's hesitation. Okabe! Okabe! I... I'm going back! But what if it fails? Get the machine started! There's no time to argue. I grab Moad Snake from the shelf. Kurosu bites her lip and starts setting up the X86000. Akabe Rintaro! One of them's heading your way! Kill them! Don't let them use it! Before the crew... Before the crew cut my into the development room, I pull the, push the switch. White smoke instantly fills the room, rendering it impossible to see. Okabe! Are you sure, Okabe? Are you sure about this? Really? Do it, Kurosu! Activate the machine! I see blue-white lightning shining through the smoke. The discharge is starting. The light rapidly grows brighter. The floor begins to shake. The singularity is open. I crouch down, holding the headset steady with one hand. This is reality. It wasn't a dream. I burned that fact into my mind as I prepared a time leap. One more chance. The shaking begins. Please! Give me one more chance! One more. The world once more the world explodes into light. Rewind, nothing happened. I can't hear. It feels like something is crushing my eardrums. <gasps> Slowly the shattered pieces of the world reform. My body convulses as if struck by lightning. I... I'm Okabe Rintaro. I'm in the lab development room, standing in front of the time leap machine with my phone to my ear. <clears throat> <clears throat> my brain hurts again. This isn't like a headache, it's somehow deeper. With the pain comes a torrent of emotions. Sorrow. Longing. Hope. Joy. That threatens to wash away my psyche. However, only one thing matters. <laughs> it worked again. I quickly return to the lounge. Oh, yeah. you, you, you surprised me! I almost crashed into Kurosu. Oh, don't don't startle me like that! Daru! Is it just before 5 on the 13th? Uh, uh, yeah. Alright, time leap successful. I pat Kurosu on the shoulders, almost as almost in an embrace. You're a genius! What? What's got into you? Stop manhandling me, it's gross! I scramble for my phone. Are you she here? Mayuri! Where are- But I can't answer the phone right now. You want a voicemail? Please leave your message after the beep. Mayori, contact me at once, okay? At once! I hang up. I look at my watch again. It's just past five. Thank God for the time leap machine. It makes me shiver to imagine what would have happened without it. I have three hours until Moeka kills Mayori. Everything's going to be okay. There's plenty of time to escape. First, I'll meet up with Mayuri and leave Akaba. We can go to Ikebukuro. Wait, what if they're watching her house? 
Maybe we should hop on the bullet train and get out of Tokyo entirely. Anyway, we're fine as long as Moeka doesn't find her today. So first I need to find Mayori. Okabe? You look kind of crazy. What's wrong? Kurosu and Daru look at me with concern. Both of you get out of here. Now! What's this about? I checked my wallet. I only have 9,000 yen and some change. I need to make a stop at an ATM and withdraw everything I have. Is this another one of your fantasies? Kurosu shrugs her shoulders, dumbfounded. I don't have time to answer her! I slip beside her and dash out of the lab. Okabe! Where are you going? Hey! I run full speed towards Yanabayashi Shrine. Naturally, I have to stop for breath before I get more than a few blocks. The sun is setting, but the temperature still hasn't dropped below 30. Sweat quickly covers my entire body. I'm not good at exercising in the first place. I finally stagger through the archway. Now I regret not borrowing Suzuwa's bicycle. But no, there wasn't time for that. Finding Mayuri comes first. I run to the courtyard where I find Lukako standing alone with her bamboo broom. Lukako! Lukako! Oh, san She bows her head. What's wrong? Mayuri! Where's Mayuri? She left? Yes. Um, why did I see her? Could you tell her that I'm sorry? I really prefer not to cosplay. I don't want to disappoint her, but it's too embarrassing to dress like that in front of people. I finally catch my breath. I don't have time to listen to Luca Ko's apologies. Mayuri went back to the lab. So? That doesn't make sense. I know she comes to the lab around 6.30. It's still 5.30. Now, no matter how slowly you walk, it shouldn't take more than 20 minutes to get to the lab. So what was she doing for that extra 40 minutes? We don't have time for this. She didn't say she was dropping by somewhere. No, I, I, I didn't ask. <sighs> There's something wrong? If Mario comes back here, tell her to call me right away! Uh, okay! I better check the lab. We might have missed each other. When I get back to the lab, nobody's there but Daru. Did Kurosu go shopping by herself? I call out to him as he's ordering pizza on the computer. Where's Mayuri? Did she come back? Huh? Yeah. No. <laughs> Where is she? I take a bottle of Dr. P out of the fridge and chug it down. The cold sparkling liquid wets my parched throat and drives the heat away. Now I can think. But I still can't relax. Every minute, every second is precious. Every moment I waste brings me closer to Mayori's death. Okarin, sir. Hey, Okarin. Why are you so jumpy? I need to find Mayori! Isn't she at Lukashi's? Not anymore! She was gone by the time I got there! I start to pace in irritation. Maybe she went to see one of her cosplay friends. Who? What's her phone number? How should I know? Damn it. It's easy to forget, since she's usually here. But Mayori and I rarely spend time outside the lab. May Queen and the Shrine, that's about it. I have no idea where else she might go. May Queen doesn't even exist on this world line. Oh, so ah, so. now that you mention it... Do you know something? I think she said her phone was about to run out of power, so she had to turn it off. Yet another setback. Not only am I unable to contact her, she might not even notice my phone calls. Hey, what's going on? Why are you still here, Daru? I thought I told you to leave! I sit on the sofa. I feel the weight of stress on my shoulders and, my, and, I'm, and, and in my bones. 
I'm not leaving without a good reason. Tell me what's going on, man. They're going to kill Mayori. What? Sun's after us. In two hours, their men will break in and kill Mayori. Get out while you still can! What? For real? Can you get in touch with Kurisu? Pass the message on to her. In two hours? How do you know that? There are pauses for a moment. He looked towards the development room where the time leap machine is sitting. No way. You used it? I nod gravely. I kick Dara out of the lab and send him home. He promises to call Kurisu and tell her to stay at her hotel. But a few minutes later, she calls me directly and demands an explanation. It takes some effort, but I manage to convince her to do as I say. Now I just need to wait for Mayuri to get back. I thought about looking for her, but it's too risky. We could miss each other at, like we did at the shrine. Better to wait here in front of the building. While waiting, I try and convince myself that everything will be okay. Mayuri, returning to the lab, re Mayuri returns to the lab at 6.30. That leaves an hour before Mawaker's attack. In an hour, we could ride the bullet train from Tokyo Station to Shizu Shizuoka. Is that the best plan? Maybe we should get up at Yokohama and lay low for in a hotel for a while. I can think about what comes up next after Mayuri's safe. The time link machine doesn't matter. Mawaker can have it. My top priority is to prevent Mayuri's death. Sweat accumulates in my forehead and rolls down my face. Hurry back, Mayuri. Huh? Startled, I turn towards the voice. Suzura and Mr. Braun have emerged from the Braun Tube workshop. I see them lock the door. Guess they're closing up shop. That's right, I forgot about Suzua. What are you doing here, Okabe Rinaro? Yeah. Nothing. That reminds me. During the attack, she took down five armed commandos in the blink of an eye. I still can't believe it. Why does an 18-year-old girl learn to move like that? Then there was her strange behavior immediately before the attack. She left as soon as she heard about the bomb threat, almost as if she knew something was going to happen. And finally, there's that business with her father. Everything about her is a mystery. Who is Amame Suzua? Huh? Well, oh, I know! You're getting ready for that well, party tonight, aren't you? How did you know we're having a party? Shinomayori? She came by earlier to invite me over. I'll be out of room for one more, Kazam! You can't! Uh, am I a bother? No. It's okay. I understand. I guess I'm still an outsider. That's not it! What's wrong with you, Okabe? I'm a part-time at Junior Little Club. You all will remember. It's thanks to her belly that I let you off the hook for shaking the building last time. My belly? Hey! Suzuha's recovered her jacket. She's properly dressed now. She's got a fine belly. Tight and well-trained. I'm standing right here, you dirty old man! The party's cancelled. I'm sorry, part-time warrior, but please go home today. Cancelled? Yeah. Sorry. I attempt to smile, but with little hope of success. I don't know what's going on, Okabe, but don't do anything reckless. Huh? It's weird to have him give me advice. I thought it was just a dirty old man who loves CRTs. Maybe he's sharper than I thought. Or maybe he's just telling me to stop shaking the building. I... I got in a fight with Mayuri. Things are a little complicated right now, that's all. That's the best lie I can manage. Oh! Is there gonna be blood? Blood? I mean, look over there! Suzua points across the street. I turn to look. To my surprise, there's Mayuri walking up the bag with a... With, walking up the street with a big bag. When she notices me, she waves her hands with a ditzy smile. Mayori! Huh? Why aren't you fighting? She looks real happy to see you! 
I ignore Suzuka and run toward Mayuri. The clock on my phone says 6.33. Hey! Where are you going? I wasted precious time talking to Suzuka. Now that I've secured Mayuri, we need to get as far away from Akiba as we can. What's the rush, Okirin? I ignore her question and grab her hand. Run! To the station! Get it! Just run! Why? I put the fucking phone down. Now is not the time. Just run! I can't get the image of Mary's death out of my mind. I won't let them kill her. I won't! Mary gives no further resistance. She follows obediently, quickly matching my pace. I forgot that she's faster on her feet than I am. First we'll head for... Tsukabara! Yokohama! I'm already gasping for air. Mayuri, on the other hand, might as well be strolling along for all the difficulty she's having. How could she be so ditzy yet so athletic at the same time? The sun has already set, but the sky is still a mix of indigo and orange. We run through the streets lit by daz dazzling shops. Everything will be fine once we make it on the train. I hold this thought in my mind as we run. I'm already exhausted. Mayori practically has to drag me along to keep going. Shouldn't we rest a bit? No. Stopping. Until we're on the train. I do my best to keep the pace. yourself. You're not good at exercise. When we reach the station, I realize that something is wrong. The station is packed. Seriously packed. You don't see this many people even at rush hour. The crowd is milling around the entrance. For some reason, it looks like no one's going in. What's going on here? A protest? Some kind of street performance? I don't have time for this. Just then, an announcement plays over the PA. Your attention, please! The Aminote, Keihin Toku, and Sohu lines are currently suspended. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience and kindly ask for your cooperation. Finally, I realized my mistake. That's right, before the attack, the trains were stopped by a bomb threat. No wonder there are so many people standing around. In my haste to flee the city, I completely forgot. How could I be so stupid?! All the train lines are stopped. We can't escape Akaba. What are the means of public transportation? The subway or the bus? Should we go to another station? I turn around and head back the way we came, keeping a firm grip on Mayuri's hand. But before we get more than a few steps, a man steps out of the crowd and blocks our way. I realize that we're surrounded. Okabe Rintaro? Okabe Rintaro? A low voice. A face I've never seen. He's not one of the five who broke into the lab. Okay. Oh, Do you know these people? <coughs> Mary grips my arm tightly. She looks anxious. <coughs> oh god, I'm dying over here. I'm choking on my own phlegm and I've been recording for four hours. This is unusual for me. But my god, am I into this. I just need more water. It's half past one in the bastard morning, I can't stop! Mary grips my arm tightly, she looks anxiously at the men. Come with us. Who are you? Instead of answering, the man grabs makes a grab for my arm. I jerk away and try and escape, but the men move to block us again. If you resist, we'll kill you. Son! They're with Moeka? She must have planned this in advance. A chill runs up my spine. We made a terrible mistake when we hacked into CERN. I realize that now, but it's far too late. Are you going to kill us with all these witnesses around? This isn't a game. I feel something cold against my back. 
I don't realize what it is at first. Then it hits me. A gun. A gulp. My blood goes cold. Am I going to die here? Will my time leap be for naught? No. I can't give up! I won't let my Ori die! I won't accept that future! How do I get out of this? The crowd at the station is growing even thicker. People are starting to argue with the station personnel, demanding to know why they can, when they can go home. It's just, the situation is quickly becoming chaotic. Suddenly, a fight breaks out nearby. It looks like some people are trying to shove their way through. This could be our chance. A tide of people surge into us, knocking, over, knocking the man behind me off balance. Now! I quickly turn and strike the man's hand aside. His gun falls away. The, then the man gets swallowed up by the crowd. My RUN MY ORI! I grab my Ori's hand and start running. We have to fight our way through the crowd. But uh, that, uh, that also thwarts our pursuers. As soon as we reach the main street, we start running back towards the lab. Of course, we can't return to the lab itself. My Waker's group will be there shortly. Is the subway still running? If we get on a... Sue... Oh, Christ. Why now? Sue Hiroshi... Hiroshi... Hiroshi Station. We can take the Ginza, li Ginza line to Shibuya. From there, we can grab a train to head out in heading out of Tokyo. I still haven't covered from my exhaustion. I don't know how much longer I can go on. We can't stop now. We have to keep running! It doesn't take long before a new obstacle appears. Four men walking together ahead suddenly stop and turn and face us. I've got a bad feeling about this. They don't look like Otaku. They with CERN too. My fears are confirmed when the four men start walking towards us. Arms spread to block the street. No doubt about it, they're after us too! I turn to flee back towards the station. And I see the first group of men closing in behind us. We're trapped. Enemies on both sides. And fucking jamming music to escape to! There's only one choice. I grab for my area and make for the nearby side street. I'm trying to get to Sue Hirosho Station without using the main streets. As we pass UPX, several men on the bridge point at us and shout something. Are they with Sun too? How many men do they have? We turn back and change course. <sighs> okay. Mayori. You're a faster. <sighs> runner. So. Talking about running uses up all my breath. Sweat drips into my eyes, making it hard to see. Oh, You're going ahead! Go to Har Hariti Shrine in Ikebukuro! We'll meet! Before I finish, I catch, catch sight of another group of men for us, waiting for us up ahead. What's going on, Okumin? I look back. The group from before are chasing us. We're surrounded by enemies. Familiar streets of Akiba are filled with agents of CERN. I recall what my waker said. You have nowhere to run. We have men stationed throughout Akihabara. Despair seizes my heart. Is escape impossible? We're just kids playing at science in the safety of our own tiny little lab. Our enemy is a multinational conspiracy willing to kill anyone who gets in the way. We were doomed from the start. No. No matter what, we must get away! Leading my Ori by the hand, I push my way through the crowd and jump the fence onto the road. <gasps> Something strikes me with crushing force, sending me tumbling to cross the pavement. I come to a stop several meters away. My body is racked with intense pain. A red curtain covers my eyes. I try to brush it off and my hand comes away slick with blood. I grip my teeth against the pain and lift my head. My Ori is lying on the pavement a few meters away. I reach out to her. No response. 
Mayuri is motionless. No. Did the impact kill her? Mayuri. This can't be happening. The car that ran us over, a white van, pulls up. The door opens and out steps. I've stopped them. Fucking course, it's you, Moeka. Kiryu Moeka. Her again. She knew the exact moment to be here in order to run over poor Mayuri. Secure Okabe kun. I mean Okabe Rintaro. She's talking to someone on her phone. Has she been tracking us this whole time? Contact the police. Shina Mayuri is dead. She looks down at me with cold enough eyes to freeze my blood. Why? Why did you kill her? Because you ran. You monster! <laughs> Mustering my strength, I leap, I leap up and throw myself at Moeka. <laughs> she goes down hard. I hear her head smack against the pavement. I stand up and look around. Moeka is dazed and unable to stand, but I see CERN agents making their way towards us through the crowd. I've got to get out of here. I take a stop. I take a step. A sharp pain stabs through my body. The crash must have broken a bone in my leg. It doesn't matter. I have to get to the lab and time leap again. That's the only way to save Mayori. I look back at the site of the accident. My waker is slowly regaining re her feet, but Mayori remains limp and motionless on the road. It pricks my heart to leave Mayori lying there, but I have no choice. I have to go. Back to the lab! Fighting the pain in my broken leg, I managed to drag myself back to the lab. Surprisingly, CERN's men didn't chase me. Nobody's at the lab when I arrive. Only the lights are still on. Relieved that Kurisu and Daru haven't returned, I head straight to the development room. I remember to break into the brawn tube workshop on the, and turn on the 42-inch CRT. My body is drenched in sweat, and I can't stop shivering. Everything hurts, especially my right side, where the car hit me. If I'm not careful, I might lose consciousness. My vision is blurry. It's hard to focus. My left arm is numb and can barely move. But still, I force myself to activate the X68000 and input the settings. I'm gasping for breath like a wounded animal. But the sound of my heartbeat fills my ears. Mayori... They killed her again. I failed to protect her. I'm sorry, Mayori. I'm sorry. Choking back my tears, I frankly, frantically pound on the keyboard. Police sirens echo in the distance. Moika hit, hit Mayori in front of hundreds of witnesses. They'll probably take her in for questioning. Even if CERN bails her out somehow, she should be stuck for at least a couple of hours. The real problem is her men. Those mercenaries or whatever they were. Cern's hit squad. Why didn't they come after me? It should have been easy for them to catch up with me, injured as I am. I need to hurry. If they show up here, they'll kill me for sure. Settings complete. I put on the headgear. I'll get blood on it, but that doesn't matter. A surge of anxiety washes over me. What if the time leap fails? What if my memories are corrupted? I might forget who I am. I might lose myself. Should I really use the machine? Of course I should. I curse my weakness. I already dead, remember? This can't be allowed to happen. No risk is too great. I will save Mayori, whatever it takes! I alone have the power to change the past. What am I waiting for? Swallowing my fear, I activate the time leap machine.
A screeching in my ears, needles stabbing into my brain, a thousand emotions flooding my senses. The world bends, pulses, and then returns to normal. The pain of my wounds has vanished like magic, replaced by a piercing pain in my brain. I fight back a wave of nausea and take stock of the situation. I'm sitting on the sofa with my phone to my ear. Another successful time leap. That makes three. Looks like the time leap machine works perfectly. I'm sure it would boost Kurisu's confidence if I told her. But that'll have to wait until Mayuri's out of danger. I stand up and look around the lab. Where's Mayuri? Kurisu, who was dozing off next to me, wakes up with a jerk at the sound of my voice. <sighs> Don't shout. I'm working all night, so let me rest a bit. Where is Mayori? What's wrong with you? You went to Lukashi's, remember? Damn, she already left. I should call or send a mail. I need to get in touch with her somehow. Mayori went to see someone after leaving the shrine. The question is who? Think. Consider every possibility. Damn, why did I forget? Because I timely, I should have asked Mayuri where she went today. I'm not thinking straight. I have to calm down. Wait, I know. Last time we failed because we went to Wakihabara Station. I should have known that Sun would be watching. This time we'll take a taxi to another station. Then hide somewhere until things calm down. But now all I can do is wait for Mayuri to return. It's driving me crazy. I consider explaining the situation to Kurisu and Daru, but I don't have the strength to do that just right now. Besides, I don't want to get them involved. I'll take care of it myself. I won't let any more friends die. As before, the Braun Tube Workshop closes early. Mayuri appears as Suzura and Mr. Braun are leaving. We run through Kandamojin's back streets of Ocham Ochanomizu Station, taking only minimal precautions to avoid attracting attention. We have to get there before the Sobel Line shuts down. We managed to make it to the station without being stopped, but when we get there, I see a group of men waiting by the entrance. They look like CERN. Change of plans. We turn around and head for the Shin Ochinomazu subway station. We arrive at the station later than I intended. I don't usually come here, so I got lost. I stare nervously at the platform clock. I go into the scrolling display, the Yamanote, Keihin, Toku, and Sohu lines have already been suspended. Wait, it looks like the Chiyoda line is, has two. It must be protocol to assume that nearby stations may be threatened, even stations on unconfirmed lines. Damn it! Maybe she hasn't said a word about my strange behavior. This is my third time I've led her on this escape. But each time, she follows me without complaint. Does she really trust me that much? Maybe she can feel my desperation. That's why I want so badly to save her. We've been together for more than a decade. She's like a little sister to me. I'll leap as many times as it takes. <coughs> my eerie tilts her head quizzically. I realize that I'm staring at her. of questions, but she'll wait for now. But once this is over, I want you to tell me everything, okay? Yeah, I promise. Mary smiles happily at that answer. That's right. While we wait for the train, I should ask Mayuri about her whereabouts today. If, if I have to leap again, I'll need all the information I can get. Where did you go today after you saw Lukiko? I got an email from Fubuki-chan! A thread came loose on her costume! I want to go fix it! Where does Fubuki-chan live? Uh, we met at the Starpex at UPX! So that's where she was. Just then, an announcement plays over the PA system. The subway is resuming normal operations. About 20 minutes have passed since we arrive. I didn't expect to be stuck here that long, but it's okay. Right now, Moeka should be in Akihabara, heading to the lab. Everything is going to be alright. 
While waiting for the train, I examined the route, route map on the train station. You can transfer to an overland train at Yo Yoyogi Uehara. It'll take a while, but that will take us all the way to Oda Odawara. Another announcement. Our train is arriving. I can hear the rumbling and see the lights at the end of the tunnel. Mary and I are standing just behind the white line. I reach for her hand, meaning to make a dash for the train door while it's open, but... I guess there's no hurry now. I let my hand fall to my side. Empty. The roar comes closer. Party. Party tonight. Maybe she is saying something. I can't quite hear her over the train. Got cancelled. We should definitely... Mayuri! Suddenly Mayuri disappears. Huh? There she is, leaning over the tracks. She's off balance, as if she stumbled or someone pushed her. She seems to hang there for a moment, and then the train comes screaming into the station. I hear the sound from under the train. I can't describe it, but it makes me instantly nauseous. Sparks fly as the train slams on its brakes. The people on the platform scream. I turn to where Mayuri was just a moment ago. There stands a familiar girl. Tiny. Adorable. A cute black rabbit pouch slung over her shoulder. Tenyoji Nai. She looks up at me. Her eyes are wide. Her lips tremble. stares at me for a few more seconds as if waiting for me to say something, then turns and runs away. The platform is in chaos. The PA informs us that there's been a personal injury accident. Nai is already gone. I don't, I don't go after her. Instead, I peek timidly through the gap between the train and the platform. You don't want to look down there, Okar Bates. One side of the track is a wash of red. My mind is blank. I can't think. I don't even remember how I got back to the lab. My waker's group should have come and gone, but the time leap machine is still here. I guess I should be grateful. It takes longer than usual to set up the machine. For some reason, I have, recall I have trouble recalling my own phone number. At last, it's ready. Now. Take me back. The leap occurs instantaneously. Taito claimed that Time Machine takes about one hour of subjective time travel to, to travel ten years. I don't know if ours is the same behavior, but now's not the time to find out. Ten years. I have no business that far back. Besides, according to Kurosu, leaping too far in the past could cause mental disorders due to the gap between personality and memory. Juicy, color, number Juicy chicken number one! Mary's singing her chicken song, though she's actually eating pre-cooked chicken from the convenience store instead of her usual juicy chicken number one. She had to switch because she can't warm up frozen chicken in the microwave, which is now dedicated part of the time leap machine. I was right to come back five hours. Mayuri is still in the lab. But what the hell happened back there? It hurts, but I forced myself to recall that horrifying scene. Mayuri died again. This time it happened at Shin Ochinomazu Station. I. Sadly, that's the first time I think I've nailed that pronunciation. 
A place can completely unrelated to the lab of the bomb threat. Tenyoji Nai pushed her onto the tracks where the train tore her to shreds. Could Nai be working for CERN too? No. No, that can't be right. Nai has a habit of jumping on Mayuri and greeting. Was, she was probably just being her usual affectionate self. But why did she choose that precise moment? I don't know. I sense malice. Who is malice? It's like fate is playing a cruel joke on us. Whatever the case, all that matters is that now I have another chance. I need to act. I have the power to save Mayuri. I will do whatever it takes to find a way. This time we hail a taxi in Ch Chuodori. It'll be expensive, but that hardly matters right now. Mayuri comes along quietly. I consider taking her home to Ikebukuro, but Moeka's group might be watching her house. I have no idea what they're, where they are at this point in time. Instead, I asked the driver to take us to Shinagawa. However... The traffic is unusually heavy. The driver says it's never been this bad before. There must be an obstruction up ahead. An accident or something. That's the only explanation I can think of. We made it out of Akiba, but at this rate it will take forever to reach Shinagawa. I consider getting off here and taking the train, but I remember what happened at Shin Ochinumizu Station. I have a bad feeling about this. The traffic jam could be CERN's doing. I look out of the window and scan the crowd for anyone who might be a CERN agent. Three hours later, we're still stuck. I got into a convenience... Con got into a conversation I heard over... According to a conversation I overheard between our driver and another driver, there's been some kind of inspection up ahead. Furthermore, it doesn't seem to be a police inspection, and a small fight broke out at, at the inspection site or something. To make matters worse, the road has already been closed off, and all cars behind us are being detoured. There's only about 100 cars waiting, but the inspection has been a standstill for three hours. This can't be a coincidence. Once again, I feel the malice of fate manipulating the situation. Is Mayuri going to die again? If I'd known it was going to turn out like this, I'd have ditched the taxi hours ago. It's not too late. I should pay the driver and get right off. Just then, someone knocks on the window. A taxi is stopped in the middle of the road. What's going on? I look over, but before I can say anything, a man opens the rear door and, and gets in next to Mayuri. <laughs> eh? He's holding a knife. Another assassin! No, no. Mayuri, look out! Before she can reply, the man covers Mayuri's mouth with a large, meaty hand. I try to open my door, but it's locked. Only the driver can open it from the inside. Mayopi Mayuri opens her eyes wide. Her body twitches. No, no. What? It all happens too fast. The man sinks his knife into Mayuri's chest. Bright red spot stains her clothes. <sighs> Be quiet, Okabe Rintaro. Another man gets into the passenger seat. He points a gun at the driver and says something to him. Strength drains from Mayuri's body. Her eyes slowly close. A tear rolls down her cheek. I watch her die inches away, powerless to stop it. I can feel her last breath against my skin. They killed her again. Why? Why? Why can't I save her? Why won't you let me save her? Who decided that Mayori must die? Moeka? Son? Or... Does the world itself wish for Mayori's death? I won't accept that! I clench my jaw and throw myself forward. Driving my forehead into the killer's nose. <laughs> he falls back. I shout to the driver. Oh, Open the door! I crawl out of the taxi and take off running through this traffic jam. After running for hours, I make it back to the lab. Luckily, the time machine time leap machine is still there. I have to leap again. I feel like she's fucking toying with us. I can't help but feel that way. Every time we run, Mayuri dies. 
Six hours into the past, I clutched my head and racked my brain for an answer. I feel like I've hit a dead end. What if I do if we can't run away? Is there no way to save her? No. There has to be a way! What you talking about? Mary's blank stare is the only answer I get. This time, I take her to the closest police station and beg them for t to protect her. When I ask why, I explain that someone is going to kill Mayuri six hours from now. But without any proof of that, there is someone after her. They have no choice but to turn her away. It's past six by the time we reach the police station. And we're left with no choice but to keep running. I wish that I could blame my previous failures on bad luck. We could try Ochi Nomazu stick or Shimbashi again. And maybe this time she won't die. But I don't have the courage to try those routes again. At the same time, we can't stay in Akaba. We're running out of options. Subways, trains, and taxis. All out. Attempting to escape by those means will get Mayuri killed. So my heart tells me. Perhaps the fear is irrational, but I can't put it out of my mind. I've seen her die half a dozen times already. Shot, stabbed, and torn to pieces. I can't go through that again. We take refuge in Yonabayashi camera. I thought we could keep hiding there indefinitely, but just after seven we hear an explosion in front of the station. Yonabashi goes into chaos. Policemen appear and start evacuating the store. When I try to explain our situation, an officer shouts terrorist and pulls his gun. This can't be happening. This isn't America. Japanese police officers don't shoot without provocation. Mayuri dies. It happens so fast. The policeman shoots her right in the head. I don't know if he was a real policeman or a CERN assassin in disguise. It doesn't matter. I can't deny it any longer. The world itself is killing Mayuri. This time, I don't leap into action immediately. Instead, I sit on the couch and collect my thoughts. Every time I try to save Mayuri, it ends up the worst possible way. To make matters worse, I no longer know what I'm even supposed to be saving her from. Cause and effect. Why does Mayuri die? At first, I thought it was Moeka and her hit squad sent by CERN to steal our time machine. But as I leapt back in time again and again, the cause of Ma Mayuri's death kept changing. At Chien Ochinomazu, the station, she died because Nai pushed her off the platform. So it had nothing to do with that. It was an accident. Each time I leap, she dies a different way. What does that mean? I've been thinking for an hour and I'm no closer to an answer. I want someone to tell me, but who can I ask? I'm the only person in history to leap through time. No, there's one more. John Titer. But he's not replying to my emails anymore. And he hasn't posted on that channel in days. I'm not even convinced he's a real time traveler. I decide not to run this time. Instead, I take a different approach. Strike first. I send Moeka an email. I need to talk to you about our time machine. Meet me alone. I designate the roof of Radicon as our meeting place. Two weeks have passed since the satellite crashed. But it's still there and the building's still closed. At least the security is lessened so it's easy for me to sneak in. Not that there's any shaking to do. Sneaking to do even. There's no shaking to do either. And I just walk in through the front door like I belong there. No one questions me. Last I came here was for Dr. Nakabachi's presentation. Remember when he was relevant? Nah, neither do I. Of course, on this world line, the presentation was cancelled. Naturally, there's nobody here but me. It occurs to me that this is a dangerous gambit. Moeka might have a gun, and I already know she's willing to use it. But then I don't intend to play fair either. We're supposed to meet at 5.30, but it's just after 5. I came early in order to ambush her. I hid in the shadows and wait with battered bre bated breath. About 30 minutes later, I hear the door open. Moeka makes her entrance, alone. 
She looks around restlessly. She still hasn't noticed me. I took a gun out of- What? What? Wait a fucking minute! This went from zero to a shit hundred and fuck real quickly. It's not real. Okay. It's future gadget number one. The bit particle gun. It's just a toy ray gun with a remote control attached. Obviously a bluff, but I could prepare on- But all I could prepare on such so, so short notice. I run up behind my work and shove the bit particle gun into her back. Don't move. <laughs> Hands up. It's like a Hollywood movie. But this isn't a movie. This is real. And she isn't an actress. She's a murderer. After Moeka raises her hand, I feel, f f feel through her clothes. Sure enough, she's carrying a gun. I take it from her and press it to Moeka's back in place of the part and the bit particle gun. Sorry to disappoint you. The first gun was a toy. Talk. I know you were sent by CERN. How? How? You want to know how? My frustration and rage boil over. Because of her. Because of her, Mayuri! I came from the future, that's how! You think I'm lying? I've repeated the last several hours half a dozen times already. I've lost count of how many times exactly. And I haven't slept at all that entire time. Strangely, I'm not tired at all. I know about what you're planning. Around seven, you're going to stop the trains. Moeka gasps. So it was their doing. I already know that you plan to attack the lab. You and your men. And that you're going to kill Mayori. I... Understand? I'm a time leaper. Moeka nods faintly. I could kill her now. It would be easy. But no, I need information. Who are you people? Rounders. Moeka answers with surprising obedience. I guess she values her own life, even though she has no problem depriving others of other people of theirs. Rounders? What does that mean? And how are you related to CERN? By email. No! Speak! The Rounders? Are an organization separate from CERN. Covert operations. We don't exist. Like a private army? No. Our mission is to find and acquire IBN 5100s. They send us around the world. We collect them. IBM 5100s. That's right, when I met her, she was looking for an IBM 5100. These days, they're nearly impossible to find. People would pay millions just to own one. Is that because CERN has been hunting them down? How many rounders are there? <laughs> Answer me! I don't know. I'm just an agent. So she's not important enough to be told. Was it you who stole our IBM 5100? Moeka doesn't answer. Why does Sir need IBM 5100s? To keep hackers out? Maintaining secrecy is the highest priority for CERN. What are they hiding? We already know they've killed hundreds of test subjects with their time travel experiments. We don't need an IBM 5100 to find that out. Are you saying the IBM 5100 database has information more sensitive than that? I don't know. Because you're just an agent. My tone is sarcastic, but Moeka nods. Damn, she's useless. Why did you attack the lab? Or rather, why will you attack the lab? Isn't it obvious? Because we hacked into CERN? Three reasons. First, 
Because of what you know. We were ordered to silence you. So CERN did know about the hacking. Second. But the time machine. The one you made. They want our time machine. So must be trying to monopolize time travel technology. Third. The reason it happens today. You plan to make your time machine public. How does she know that? We made the decision right after the time leap machine after the time leap machine was completed. That was only a few hours ago. That's why I was ordered to take you in. Take us in? You killed Mayori! She is unnecessary. Unnecessary. I nearly pulled the trigger. Kabe, Makase, Hashida, you made the time machine. She is expendable. Those are my orders. And if you take us in, what then? Sir will hold you prisoner, force you to complete their time travel research. Have you done this before? How many lives have you ruined for CERN's research? I do as I'm told. I was a fool to consider you my friend. I live for CERN. I live for FB. I'll do anything if FB tells me to. FB? Is that the name of her supervisor? Kabe-kun. Is it you? Are you John Titer? What? John Titer? There's no one else it could be. Me? I don't have time for this. I did the gun into Moeka's back. If you want to live, you'll call your friends. Call FB and cancel the attack. Moeka shakes her head. I don't have the authority. I don't care! Find some way to stop the attack! Otherwise... I'll kill you! I can't do it. I'm not a killer. My hands are trembling just like Moeka's were before that she shot Mayuri. Why? Why did you kill her?! She was hesitating. She didn't want to pull the trigger. But she did. You didn't want to kill her, did you? So why? I... Just obey. FB. Then bring that son of a bitch here! Moeka shakes her head again. I don't care about your authority. If you don't do what I say... I can't. I've never... Something hard stabs into my back. A chill runs through my body. There's someone behind me. Drop the gun. A man's voice. Is he with Moeka? You lied, Kiryu Moeka! I'm ready to pull the trigger in cold blood. You promised to meet alone! Moeka doesn't answer. I said drop the gun! I'll give you the time machine, just don't kill anyone! Even if you do that... Even though I'm still pointing the gun at her, Moeka steps away and turns to face me. Her eyes are cold, her expression unreadable. You'll still be held prisoner. Forever. Moeka takes the gun from my hand. I'm unable to resist. Please. I'm sorry about the hacking. Just please. Don't kill anyone. Something strikes the back of my head. My legs give out instantly, sending me to the ground. Darkness creeps in. Target B in custody. Requesting pickup. Deep down I knew. I can't save Mayori. Even if Moeka's group doesn't kill her, 
Someone or something else will. The world itself wants her dead. That's the choice of Steins Gate. Steins Gate? There's no such thing. Those words have no meaning. It's just some nonsense I made up to sound cool. Steins Gate doesn't exist, but fate does. Fate. God. The will of the universe. An absolute force that no one can resist. It exists, and it has sentenced Mayuri to death. I wake up in the back of a station wagon. The windows are coated with black film, so I can't tell where we are. I feel a throbbing pain in the back of my head. My hands are tied behind me. What time is it? How long have I been unconscious? There's a man with me inside the car. I recognize him from a previous leap. He's the one who stabbed Mayuri in the taxi. The man seems to notice I've woken up, but he doesn't speak. He just waves his gun menacingly, as if to say that there is no hope of escape. The dashboard clock reads 7.30. I look out of the window again. Through the film, I manage to make out a street sign. We're close to the lab. Has the attack already happened? Before I left, I told everyone, including Mayuri, to run. If she did as I said, she won't die by their hands. But that doesn't mean she's safe. If I don't do something, my wake is going to take the time leap machine away. What will happen then? Sun can have the time machine if it'll save Mayori. The problem is that it, it won't. Not when the world itself is determined to kill her. As long as the time leap machine remains in my hands, I can keep trying to fix things. I'll leap again and again until I find a way to save her. But if I lose the time machine, then the future is decided. A future without Mayori. I have to get... I have to get to it before they do. Even if that means I might get shot. As long as I survive the, to reach the time leap machine, everything will be alright. <laughs> My bound hands limit me to headbutts and kicks, but somehow managed to knock, the man, knock down the man guarding me and escape. My chest and neck are covered with blood. I must have been shot during the struggle, but thanks to the adrenaline pumping through my body, I barely feel any pain. I can still move, and that's all that matters. I run up the stairs with my hands still tied. I can only pray that I'll be able to operate the time leap machine quickly enough. Mayuri, Kurosu, and Daru are in the lab. Oh, for fuck's sake. So are Moeka and her men. When I open the door and burst in, everyone looks at me in surprise. When she sees my tattered body, Mayuri runs up to me with tears in her eyes. WAIT! I try to stop her. In the corner of my eye, I see Moeka take aim at Mayuri. I tr try to put myself between them. I try to cover Mayuri with my body. But a man grabs me from behind and pulls me back. I watch, helpless, as Mayuri's tiny body drops to the floor. Her eyes... Wide and wet with tears seem to stare into mine. But I can see they've already lost their light. She's gone. Again. Again. Again! What happens next is the same as before. Suzuo defeats the rounders and Kurosu helps me the time leap. I really don't want to, but I need to call this because it's two in the bastard morning. <laughs> oh boy, I... D oh! I just want to keep fucking going! But I don't want to because as I've said... Oh god, I'm... I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. I am not going to be able to sleep. Whew. The, the, t the train one really got to me. For, um personal reasons, but I'll leave that aside. <sighs> oh, I, I, I need to wash at some point, but as I've said, I can't. Anyway, 
thank you for watching this train wreck. <laughs> oh god, I ne I'm I'm not going to be able to save her, am I? This is this is just the sad reality that I'm going to have to accept at some point. I'm not going to be able to save her. Voice cracks and all. Anyway, if you I was going to say like the video, but that's a highly inappropriate term right now. There is nothing to like about what's going on. It's fucking miserable. But if you enjoyed the episode in any capacity, please give the video a like down below. Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel if you want updates on when this train wreck continues. Train wreck being a highly insensitive term to use right now, considering, you know, the, the problems that happened. Whew. Oh boy. Shit got fucked up real quick. I know I made jokes about it, but when you reach that level... Oh god, it's, 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 it's just sad. Anyway, thank you all for watching. I've been Nyx, and I'll see you guys next time. Laters.